Hello and welcome to the latest FQ Show Extra, a special edition of the show today in light of recent events for a couple of Queenslanders on the national stage. Today I'll be chatting with one of those heroes from last Tuesday morning and also a recalled member of the Matildas squad. Uh, starting us off today, I've been lucky enough to be joined by last Tuesday's player of the match against Peru, uh, a match where Soros qualified for our fifth straight World Cup. It was an absolute rock at the back and had an excellent performance, uh, picking up his first cap uh, in that camp as well. Um, of course, joined here today by Kai Rolls. Kai, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks for having me. No worries. Uh, first of all, mate, on behalf of everyone in not just Queensland, but uh, Australia, uh, congratulations on such a remarkable performance. Uh, how does it feel to have played such a vital role in one of the great wins for the Socceroos and Australian football? Yeah, it's. Um... It was pretty crazy to be involved in like pretty much a remake of um, the 2005 yeah. um, performance. Um, yeah, it still hasn't sunk in yet, really. I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting for the day that it does, but yeah, like, it just really come out of nowhere. But yeah, so stoked for like everyone involved and it was a massive night. And yeah, it was just great to get the win for not only the boys and the families and the staff involved with you know, the Federation, but uh, the whole nation, I think um, we really needed it, you know, and now the next 18 months for Australian football is definitely a very exciting one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, not just a World Cup in Qatar, but for the, for the girls as well when when we host the the, um, the female World Cup in 23. It was, it was such a grilling uh, qualifying for you guys as well with, you know, 1,008 days, 20 matches with five at home. Um, it's win it off just, yeah, 120 minutes of football and a penalty shootout. Um, yeah, it was, it was incredible. Um, the celebrations after as well looked incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we had a bit of fun, but... <laughs> <laughs> Rumour has it Martin Boyle was still in his, uh, his playing kit. <laughs> he might be. I haven't checked up on him, but he could be. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Fantastic, yeah. How, um, how next were you in the... Where were you on the, the penalty lineup? How long? Um, <laughs> oh, I was st I was still pretty safe. I think I was ninth. So okay, yep. <laughs> yeah, I had a bit of breathing room still, but um, it was starting to get a bit nervous. Like when we got to, I think AY was number six. So yeah, like, yeah. it was only two more, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, the way that um, like our boys are taking them, you know, we're not going to miss. So it's, it, and if they keep scoring, then it's you, it could go the whole way. But yeah. um, then Red has obviously made that save, and yeah. Massive sign of relief, really. <laughs> <laughs> Cemented himself into focal, hey. Yeah. Um, you guys practice the practice those, you know, not just actually taking the pens, but also the kind of the walking up to it um, and, and taking it in front of everyone as well, didn't you? Yeah, we, yeah, we did that for, I think we were over there three weeks and we, we pretty much did that from like the second or third session. So, yeah, well, <clears throat> you, you don't really like plan on going to pens, obviously, but no. um, we were well prepared. Um, like yeah. obviously the keepers and then our boys as well. So I think it it helped with all the practice that we did do. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Uh, this was your first uh, senior national team camp that you've been caught into, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and... second one, but I, it was okay. like my first game, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, I was going to say, it was uh, the one that saw you in your first cap, uh, <laughs> number 622, I believe. Yeah, 622, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so got yourself a starting... Uh, starting to booze against Jordan and then, uh, you know, got the, got the nod against the UAE and then the, the penultimate one in Peru. Uh, how were the nerves levels when, when Arnie told you uh, you're going to be starting these games? Yeah, pretty, pretty nervous. Um, yeah. Especially like the two um, playoffs, like. Yeah. The UAE game was like the biggest game for like us in four years, pretty much. And then obviously to win that. And then the next one's, even like, bigger, <laughs> even bigger. So I was just like yeah. trying not to think about the occasion and just playing the game. Like, and I think all our boys did really well in that regard of not playing the occasion, just going out there knowing that we've yeah. just if we do all our jobs together, then we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, awesome. You obviously had a, a great performance as well against Peru. Um, Mark Milligan, I saw rated you at nine out of ten in his uh, post-match player ratings. Um, how does it feel, um, not just to be like sort of selected and to play well, but to also get like the recognition and the praise from um, not just a former soccer but a former soccer captain, you know, like how does that feel? Oh, yeah, it's a massive like honour for 
those guys, those legends pretty much to um, speak to you in that regard. But, um, you know, you don't really play for the praise, so to speak. You yeah. play to, like, you know, get the job done and make um, everyone proud, especially your family, you know. So um, I feel like as long as, uh, like, I can make my family and friends proud, then I'm on the right track. And um, I think most of the boys are the same. You know, we, we just wanted to go there and, you know, qualify for a World Cup and, because yeah. that, that's our job, you know, that's what, what we're getting picked to do. And um, everyone in the end was very happy with how we got there and how we achieved it. So, yeah, it was just overall like a great camp for everyone. And, you know, to get those comments, it's always nice. But, um, yeah. you know, also you, you, you're just going there to get the job done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you were selected over Sainsbury and Degenek, who I think were missing out sort of due to uh, lack of fitness or injuries and stuff. But you're still you know, training alongside them and playing alongside um, someone like Bailey Wright, who's, you know, just come off the back of a playoff win with Sunderland. Like, how has that sort of fast-tracked your learning and um, how has it been sort of, yeah, training and being around the environment with uh, with those boys? Yeah, those boys have helped massively. Um, even the camp in, I think, uh, late January, maybe at the start of the year, um, was the first, like, call-up I got. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they just they've helped so much, and even this this latest camp, um, they're just helping so much. And you know, once we found out the team and stuff like that, they didn't like just walk away kind of thing. They came up to me and was just like, "Just do your thing. Like you you're playing for a reason. Don't you don't have to be anyone you're not. You don't have to change anything you've done because it's got you here." Yeah, um, awesome. And in that regard, you know, they they're so helpful and. You know, they gave me pointers on um, how to play, how to mark the strikers, stuff like this. And, um, you know, without their help, then maybe I wouldn't have played the the way that I did because, um, you know, I might not have been as relaxed or believed as much, you know. But with these guys here, they really make you feel like you're one of them. And um, I guess once you can realise that, then the game becomes just like another game really and you know that you just do your job and you play the way you always do and uh hopefully the desired result like will eventuate so yeah without those guys I think you know I'd be maybe a little bit more stranded on an island but they've really yeah. helped massively no that's awesome that, that's really great to hear and you know just really sort of symbolizes that good Aussie spirit that we you know get in to support each other so to hear that you know those boys are doing that like that's that's great and great for your development that as well hey like yeah yeah so, definitely it's the same for like all positions like all us young boys have learned so much with all the senior guys there they've just got so much like knowledge and experience that and they're always willing to share it which is just awesome yeah because quite a quite a lot of you actually played in the um in the 2020 olympics i mean that under 23 squad there was quite a quite a big contingent um who had sort of yeah i think there's like five that. or six of us yeah yeah no, that was, yeah. So, yeah, you guys have been learning so much and just, yeah, the future of the soccer route. So that's, that's great that they're, they're passing that down. Um, you were selected after some great form with the Central Coast over the last sort of five years. You picked up 104 caps um, in your five years there and several uh, Player of the Year awards. Um, played an FFA Cup final, won the Mark for Duke medal. First player to win a, um, on the losing side, <laughs> unfortunately for you, but... Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> how do you feel that these experience uh, and also um, you played uh, in the A-League All Stars against Barcelona. So how do you feel that these experiences have sort of got you to where you are and how do you feel that they motivate you to, to push you even further through your career? Yeah, it's just been the, especially the last couple of years, the exposure to those bigger games like uh, mm -hmm. in the finals and stuff like that. It, you know, they're the more pressure moments than just your average uh, a league game, you know, because you get to play next week. But with these finals, you know, it's do or die, like yeah. the like the playoffs were. So, in a way, playing those games has kind of helped understand that pressure moment and and just playing your game and, um, you know, at the same time, not trying to take risks because sometimes, like in those do or die games, you know, one mistake is all, and then the game's just done. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think. It's, it's helped massively um, those that exposure to those types of games and those moments. And, yeah, it's been really good, especially the last couple of years. You know, um, when I first moved to Mariners, it was pretty tough times for, like, mm -hmm. 
two or three years there and breaking into the squad it's always tough hey eh? yeah yeah and you know we got like some pretty bad results as well but then the last two years we've really bounced back and turned the ship around and yeah um it's, I mean, it's always easy to be noticed when your team's doing so well and when, you know, so yeah. Um, especially being a defender, you know, you're copping like so many goals a week and that <laughs> you're just like tossed in the bin pretty much. So yeah, um, to have the boys, you know, rally the last couple of years has been nice and everyone's getting noticed now, which is good. And that, that's all you want, especially for your teammates. Like you just want to, you want to get moves or you want to be playing well and, you want that for yeah. all your teammates as well. So it's just positive for everyone when things are going well. Yeah, great. Um, just tapping into the start of your journey, you're a junior at uh, Palm Beach Sharks and then you moved into the, the QAS. Uh, what are some of your favourite memories of, of those days? Um, I'm, I'm only still a young pup now, but it still feels <laughs> like so, such a long so time. Not, not to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Planet Prime, probably the gala days, eh? Like, yeah, as a like little young tucker playing like so many games on the small fields every day, uh, like yeah. on the weekends, you know, and yeah. you get to eat lollies and you're just smashing power raids and stuff, and you just run around and don't get tired. Where now you run around for like 15 minutes and you're knackered, <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, yeah, like the gala days playing with your friends from school, all that kind of stuff, like you know, you. you it's still fun now, don't get me wrong, but there's yeah. it's, it's so serious and res, it's results-based now, whereas as a kid, you're just having fun and kicking the ball with your mates, you know? Yeah. Nice. Um, and then uh, QAS probably – I don't think I played, like, first team for QAS in the – I think – I don't know if it was NPL back then. might have been – it was still, like, Brisbane yeah, okay. Premier League or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I played 18s and I remember coming off the bench – um, for my like second game and scoring like a pretty sick volley. That was when I was a midfielder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> scored a volley from like outside <laughs> the box. And that's probably my best memory. But even like there was a few of us boys, I think I was with Daggers there still. Yeah. And, you know, to go through with him, we had a year together at Runaway Bay in like oh, yeah, 11s yeah. or 12s. Um, and that's pretty special, you know, to go through – all the steps with him and and to yeah, get to the national team together is yeah, like just yeah. wild. That is um, that is very cool. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's an awesome like path to share and yeah, we're just so stoked together as well. So that's that yeah, that's been awesome. Um, yeah. Well, hopefully Daggers can pick up some more um, more minutes as well and get himself you know more into it. He had a good season with victory, so um, another exciting Queensland prospect there. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what would be your advice to, to young Queenslanders out there to sort of follow in your footsteps and, and get to that, yeah, get to play for the Socceroos? Hard work. It sounds like a cliche, but seriously, it is. Yeah. Um, and don't get down. You just keep going. Like mm. those three years when I first went to Mariners, like it was tough. It was really tough. And, you know, you just pretty much just getting beaten every week and yeah. beaten hand, like handsomely as well you know so um like it's it's really hard to sometimes in those moments but um you know you just got to keep showing up each week and give you give it 110 percent um yeah just focus work on things that you need to work on and then and then some and yeah. then don't stop working on what you think you're good at as well because everything can always get better Absolutely. just yeah yeah hit the gym as well like it, it doesn't really look like I do but <laughs> <laughs> I mean gym gym helps a lot as well yeah because then your body can I mean I, I've touched wood I've been pretty good for uh like injuries and that so um the, every little bit helps pre act gym yeah um fitness like you always do extras after training like you can never be in like top shape you can always get a little bit better and little better little you know so yeah, yeah, but yeah, I, I just think just stick to it, and there's always going to be downs. That's just what life is, you know. So it's it's just how you like conduct yourself during those periods of time where you know you might be struggling a little bit because grass is always greener when you get on the other side. And yeah. I mean, I'm in that period right now. So and then when you're there, just don't don't uh, take it for granted, you know. Just grab it from both hands, try and run as far as you can with it. 
Yeah, yeah. nice. Um, well, yeah, hopefully some of the, the young ones listening along to this can uh, take some of that on board and get some more Queenslanders in the uh, in the national setup. Um, in recent uh, time of you know months, I suppose not only have you received a national team uh, cap, but you've got your first overseas transfer. Um, going to Edinburgh and Scotland to play for Hearts of uh, Midlothian. Uh, Hearts, as they have uh, nicknamed. Uh, you excited for the move? Yeah, I can't wait. You know, that's the first uh, like time playing overseas. So it's going to be awesome. Um, we had uh, Nathaniel Atkinson over in the Socceroos yep. camp as well. And yeah, I was pretty much uh, grilling him with all sorts <laughs> of questions about how the club is, how the people are, how the city nice. is and that. And he's got nothing but uh, good things to say. So I'm just really excited to get over there and give it a crack. You know, something uh, it'll be a lot different to playing footy here, but um, mm. I can't wait. I'm super excited and, yeah, bring it on. Yeah, um, hopefully some of the Aussies can, um, you know, follow you along at home. And I'm pretty sure KO have the rights to sort of to that. So Yeah, I'm pr- I, yeah I watched a few games this year. I'm pretty sure KO does have it. Yeah, I was getting around Ange at Celtic and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wishing, him, <laughs> wishing him well. But um, uh, Edinburgh is a, a lovely city, so I hope you have a really good time over there and, um, so like so many Aussies have, have gone over to the, the Scottish Premier League and, and kicked on to, to sort of higher leagues and, uh, you know, won stuff as well. Tommy Rogic has recently just won another Scottish Premier League. So what are your ambitions for your, your time overseas and, and possibly even further in the next few years? Yeah, uh, like our ambitions at, at Hearts is to, you know, give those two a shake up, the, two, the, yeah. the big dogs, um, you know, push them a little bit and... and kind of let people know, you know, there's another team here, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, they had a great season last year making the cup final and mm. um, I'd love to repeat that as well. And then obviously there's um, opportunities in European football this year for them. So, in the conference, um, is that the conference league that you guys are in? This there's year? a couple of, uh, it's a home and away leg for Europa League. Okay, yeah, nice. Qualifier. And yep. then um, I think it, could be guaranteed conference league yeah, from nice. there. So, okay. yeah, it's it's going to be awesome. Like, it's a great opportunity. and Yeah, it's playing um, some weird I mean, parts of Europe. and uh... Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's so exciting, though. Like, I've, I've not really travelled Europe much so at yeah. all, really. So I'm just keen for that whole side of it to, you know, see those new places and versus new teams and, you know, pretty much the best players in the world as well. 100%. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time uh, today, Kai. You've been really generous in, in chatting with me here and, um, yeah, touched on some, yeah, some great emotions and some uh, of, of recent weeks and, um, and fond memories and stuff of your, of your youth. And, and that. It's, it's been great talking to you. So thanks for coming on the, on the show, mate. Really appreciate it. No dramas. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, next up, I've been fortunate enough to chat with a recently recorded Queenslander into the Matilda squad. Uh, who are currently in Spain at the moment as part of their latest camp ahead of two international friendlies. At the moment, she leads the line for NPL side Capalba FC and Brisbane Roar in the A-Leagues. And that is, of course, Larissa Crummer. Larissa, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Good to have you on board. Um, you're calling from uh, Spain at the moment, uh, I take it. Uh, and uh, how's, the, uh, how's the mood around the, the camp? Is everyone uh, sort of excited for uh, Spain and Portugal coming up? Uh, yeah, everyone's um, really keen to get into camp. Um, it's obviously in a, in a beautiful part of the world. So, mm. um, yeah, everyone's excited and everyone's just raring to get going. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, nice. And so um, you're there as part of a, a two-week sort of camp. Is, am I correct in saying that? Yeah, so we play on the, I think it's the 26th and the 29th. Um, so, yeah, so we've got a, a little bit to build into it. Um, so, yeah, no, everyone's really excited. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, it's obviously it's been four years since you were last in uh, until this camp, and quite possibly a uh, surprise uh, recall for you. Um, obviously, the last few years have been sort of fairly difficult with recovery uh, with a serious leg injury you had in the 2018-19 uh, season. How have the last couple of years in the NPL and A leagues helped you develop as a player since you were last in the national setup? Oh yeah, it's been a while. Um... <laughs> You know, I've had the I've had the two years off, obviously recovering from from the injury. Um, but yeah, I think I've I've grown, I've definitely grown as a person. Um, I think I've learned the game a little bit more. Um, and then, obviously, playing in the MPL and, and back at Brisbane Royal. So yeah, it's been awesome. Um, training's been consistent. 
Um, I've somewhat kept myself injury free for a little bit. So, yep. yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling really good. Always a positive and obviously made a grand final last year with, uh, with the Palomar against, against Lions. Uh, how was that and, and that season? No, it was good. Um, it was definitely probably the first full season I've had under my belt since since the injury. Um, mm. So it was just nice to have consistent games and and obviously scoring a lot of goals and stuff during the season. So, yeah, it set me up for a good good raw season. So I was, I was very happy with that. Yeah, and um, obviously getting a record to the squad in, uh, in February of 2021, the raw squad that is. So um, that was, yeah, under... Um, Oh, his name is Scott, a good coach, coach of the Raw uh, before Gareth. And Gareth obviously got you um, back again, which is good. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> your injury was quite worse than you first thought. Obviously, you sort of had quite a few uh, complications and, and stuff with that along the way. So how are you able to uh, like stay resilient and positive and motivated to get yourself back to sort of where you are now? Uh, it was difficult. You know, some days I was... I was pretty down. Um, I, I kind of didn't see a finish line in at one point, and yeah, I just I thought about giving up a couple of times, but you know, I had the family behind me, and I'd always be training, doing something to keep myself fit. So yeah, I just wanted to, I guess, push push hard and and see if I could get back to where I, where I was before I, I broke it. So mm. yeah, well, just I just I just stayed <laughs> strong. <laughs> yeah, well, fantastic to see you. Uh getting getting back to that uh, stage now which is awesome but how much does it mean for you to be returning to the squad now <laughs> obviously a lot of maturity yeah no it means a lot um you know it's like you said it's been four years so yeah it's definitely taken a lot to get back here but yeah i'm, I'm definitely start, um, glad that i stayed with it yeah no, that's awesome and what do you feel you can uh, sort of bring to the squad um uh, there's obviously a lot of um younger uh like teenagers and, and stuff coming through the system and many of them are now at the age that you were when you first started um, in with the Matilda. So uh, passing on that experience of coming up through as, as a youngster. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think I was around at two, 2015. So, yeah, I think I was quite a young as well. And I think just being around the girls definitely helped me a lot. And, yeah, obviously um, I didn't play very much back then at World Cup and stuff. So, I'd like to give it a crack and, and see if I can get more game time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so you said you were, um, had your debut in, in 2015. You are just 19 years of age there. And you've been sort of in and around that Matilda setup since the young Matildas as a 14-year-old. Uh, what were your early experiences that, as a young Queenslander in that, uh, in, in that professional environment? No, I was unreal. Um, I definitely think being so young and, and being with a lot of the older girls helped me grow up. Um, a lot and mature a lot earlier. Mm. Um, I think it definitely helped my football as well. So, yeah, I think it was awesome being there and, and obviously made some really good friends along the way. Um, mm. Definitely friends for life. So, yeah, um, we've yeah, you know, Queensland's got a good track record of producing you know, talented players in the, in the in the women's national team. Yeah, um, a number of them there with you now. Hey, like. Um, Got uh, the young ones in Winnie Heatley and Jamila Rankin getting recalled or called up, sorry, into the squad for uh, Angie Beard um, and then and Courtney Vine as well. And then you've also got some of the more older heads as well in Claire Polkinghorn, Katrina Gorey, and um, Spanky Yallop. Um, with the Women's World Cup around the corner, like how happens it having these players involved around the team and representing our state? Yeah, no, it's awesome. Um, obviously, played a lot with those at Raw. So, mm. yeah, I mean, it's, it's good having Pulse here and especially Mini. Um, Mini with little Harper as well. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's definitely def- definitely awesome to have um, a baby in camp. Um, <laughs> yep. But, yeah, I think it's, it's, just, it's just good to see so many Queenslanders in and around the squad and, and, yeah, especially the young ones being asked into Matilda's camps and stuff. So, yep. yeah, we must be breeding them well up in Queensland. <laughs> Something in the water, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How, how are the young girls going in the camp? They um they're just really excited to be there and what are the yeah, what are they like around camp? No, they they all bring like a really good vibe and you know they're happy and they always want to do stuff and things like that. So no, it's it's awesome having them around. Yeah, fantastic. And I suppose where does that sort of leaves, you know, with um yeah, your ambitions. Uh, with the national team moving forward and with the World Cup just around the corner. 
Um, what are your goals moving forward here? Just get get on that uh, I'm not even on the plane because we're already it's, it's a World Cup at home, but I'm um, just getting that yeah. squad and around for the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's I think that's um, everyone's goal at the moment. Um, you know, I've always said I'd love to do another World Cup. I loved it in 2015. Um, yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, I just I just need to keep playing consistent and and keep playing well, and I think it'll it'll happen one day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you are on the path and um, overcoming an, an injury as you have done, um, <laughs> and you know, as you said, you could have could have possibly walked away and. Uh, it's, yeah, testament to your strength that you haven't. So, um, yeah, uh, great work on that, and congratulations again on, on getting the call. Um, I hope you hope you have good uh, a, a good well, I suppose a couple of friendlies coming up. Uh, so we've got um, what Spain uh, on the on the twenty fifth, and uh, Portugal yep. on Tuesday. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, nice I'm one. excited. Yeah, <laughs> it's good good to see. You. Uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks for joining me tonight, Larissa. Well. So right here in no Australia. Worries. Thanks but, uh, for having me. Afternoon over for you, but uh, yeah, thank you and good yeah. luck with it all. Thank you so much. No worries. <laughs>